This is Georgetown, a place of passion and hard work. To be a Hoya, it takes your all. Mind, heart, a pursuit for excellence. We seek out the best in one another and ourselves. Determined to learn. Determined to succeed. Determined to have an impact on and off the field. There goes old Georgetown, that spark that ignites us to set the world on fire. A calling to reach higher than you ever thought possible. Working as hard in the classroom as we do in the weight room. A community rooted in a 500-year-old Jesuit tradition. DC is our training ground. The world is our arena. Together, we are stronger. Together, we are unstoppable. We are Georgetown.
Every year we gather here in tradition, a tradition that brings our community all together to celebrate on the hilltop. This lawn means a lot. It is a place for gathering, study, relaxation, and fun. And today, it is for celebrating. Celebrating these graduates who have worked so hard to get here and cross the stage to receive their diplomas. We aim for Georgetown to be in top shape, to host all of the friends and families that come through our gates. We look forward to this moment all year. It's an exciting time. Having worked on 19 commencement ceremonies, it's always special, but this year is very special. My daughter Morgan is graduating, and I'm so very proud of her. This will be the first commencement in 19 years that I'll be attending as a proud parent. I want to congratulate Morgan, her classmates in the School of Nursing, and the entire class of 2023. I'll see you all here. Congratulations, I just wanted to send some well wishes. There is nothing you can't accomplish. I am super, super proud of you. We're so proud of you, Korea. Greetings from the Philippines. We wish we were there to celebrate with you. We're so proud of you. We're so proud of you. You make the world a better place, honey. We love you. Sabíamos que lo ibas a lograr, hijo. Estamos orgullosos de ti. Te queremos. Congratulations, sis. Congratulations to the Georgetown University Class of 2023. I can't wait to see what you have next for us. We can't wait to see the good you're gonna do in this world. Your hard work and dedication have paid off. As one journey ends, another one begins. And your journey at Georgetown was defined by excellence, passion, and happiness. Congratulations, Maya and Class of 2023 from Wisconsin. You are the toughest I have ever seen. So congratulations on everything that you achieved. I just wanted to say congratulations and we are so proud of you. Congratulations, Paola Guerra, you did it. I'm so proud of you. Shukamida. Boya Saxa. We love you. We just wanted to let you know that I'm proud of you. Congrats, we're all so proud of you. It's only the beginning, keep going. So proud of you. Thank you, Georgetown.
are you going to be here at the podium? No, ma'am. I'm just one of the photographers. Okay. Thank you. It all starts with a spark, a dream, a wish, it is through your determination and resilience that your dreams, your aspirations become a reality. Today is a celebration of this journey, the day you first discovered your passions the instant you open the door to your future. The challenges you overcame. The moment that you realized your hard work has gotten you here. Today, as you look around, remember a dedication to become the best version of who you were called to be. Our families, friends, and loved ones are all here to celebrate you. Your gifts, your talents, and your fullest selves. We are forever Hoyas, together as people for others. Our horizons stretch beyond DC and the hilltop, ready to make an impact on the world. Class of 2023, it is time. It is our time. Hoya Saxa.
Maybe get it right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. 
Good evening. Please be seated. President DeJoya, Frank McCourt, members of the faculty, distinguished guests. Welcome to the commencement exercises for the McCourt School of Public Policy at Georgetown University. I am Maria Kanchan, Dean of the McCord School. In October of 2013, we became the McCord School, thanks to the vision and generosity of alumnus Frank McCord. I want to thank him as we recognize this 10th class of McCord School graduates. Today, we assemble to honor the candidates for degrees of Master of Public Policy, Master of Policy Management, Master of International Development Policy, Executive, <laughs> Master of Policy Leadership, and Master of Science in Data Science for Public Policy. These graduates have the rigorous training and the ethical grounding the vision and the capacity to work across differences that are foundational to a McCourt School education and that prepare them to be the effective change makers that the world needs. We will begin our ceremony with an invocation delivered by Lisa Directo Davis and following the invocation, Provost Robert Groves will offer welcoming remarks Please stand for the national anthem, which will be led by the Bayfield Brass Band. Please remain standing for the invocation. May all of you who are gathered here today to mark this sacred moment in this place of legacies be blessed. Together, we share our prayers and lift up our aspirations. Living and Holy One, draw us together in the uniqueness of our spirits into the solidarity of one spirit on this day of commencement. May we be profoundly mindful of the many gifts of this day and express gratitude towards family, loved ones, faculty, staff, and fellow students in our lives who have enabled us to reach this very moment. Let us pause and heed the hard-won lessons of pain and promise of these past years formed by academic and personal rigors in the midst of a pandemic, social upheaval, climate catastrophes, and war. May these lessons nurture a willingness to be brokenhearted and disturbed by systemic injustices 
so that like the refiner's fire, we learn to burn off the dross of apathy, racism, and individualism. Should we become weary or burdened by everyday tragedies, failed attempts, maladies, restore us with courage, ground us with wisdom to rest and be still so that we can emerge again with a renewed and profound sense of our belonging to one another, compelled to be energetic stewards and judicious architects of public policies designed to elevate all peoples and all of creation. So in this moment, breathe. Breathe into us the virtue of hope to make something new as we go forth from this ritual of transformation and transition. Make the work of your hands, mind, spirit, and heart be fortified, animated by the call to be the next generation of enlightened and compassionate leadership. And may you incline and we incline the ears of our hearts now to hear the divine still small voice that abides within us always. Remind us of who we are and whose we are and that we are both stardust and gold, fearfully and wonderfully made. May peace be with you always. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Lisa and Dean Kenchung. It is my pleasure, my deep pleasure, to see all of you, our graduates and guests at this commencement ceremony for the McCourt School of Public Policy on what is probably the most glorious day of weather that we've had in 10 years, so welcome. I especially welcome those who've traveled from far away. And those for whom this is the very first time you've been on this Hilltop campus, which for over 230 years has educated its students to become leaders in service to the nation and the world. So why, you might wonder, do we call this graduation a commencement? Well, this is an ending of a set of rigorous studies by these graduates, but it's also a beginning. You, the graduates, are about to leave. You have not just arrived, as several years of tuition payments may make clear to you, uh, but naming this event commencement is rooted in the very beginning of these cer uh, ceremonies decades, centuries ago, when what we understood as universities first appeared. These gowns you wear and the somewhat heavier gowns we up here wear, the hoods on your arms were the clothing stipulated for scholars warm hoods and gowns in unheated buildings. They weren't summer wear for a warm Washington May, I admit, but they were the custom. And the ceremonies were called commencement because they marked beginnings, just as this ceremony does today for you, the beginning of your lives in the world, and we trust and we hope the beginning of your lives for the world as people for others. You must know that the world needs you very, very badly now. It needs your knowledge, it needs your skills, it needs your idealism and your compassion and your energy, and so you commence. The world is all before you right now. We can't wait 
as faculty and administrators to watch you progress through your life, making greater and greater impacts. I want you to know that we are very, very proud of you and your achievements that bring us here today make us glow. Congratulations to all, thank you for coming. Thank you, Provost Groves. Our founder, the Most Reverend John Carroll, first Archbishop of Baltimore and the first Catholic Bishop in the United States, took legal possession of the land on our hilltop in 1789. And we mark that as our founding date. Our first student, the future North Carolina Congressman William Gadsden, arrived in 1791, though our first bachelor's degrees were not awarded until 1817. It was in 1815 that with enrollments passing the 100 mark, the college's president, Father John Grassi of the Society of Jesus, asked then Congressman Gaston to present a petition for a federal charter, a document that we still sanction, you, that still sanctions the academic business that we do here today. Georgetown's charter, the first federal charter in the history of the Republic, has the additional distinction of having been signed by President James Madison, the father of the United States Constitution. It is our custom to initiate academic ceremonies with the reading of that charter. To discharge that office, I am pleased to introduce Ms. Marie Matson, Secretary of the University. An act concerning the College of Georgetown in the District of Columbia. Be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, that it shall and may be lawful for such persons as now are or from time to time may be the president and directors of the College of Georgetown within the District of Columbia to admit any of the students belonging to said college or other persons meriting academical honors to any degree in the faculties, arts, sciences, and liberal professions to which persons are usually admitted in other colleges and universities of the United States, and to issue in an appropriate form the diploma or certificates which may be requisite to testify to the admission of such degree. Signed, Langdon Chivas, Speaker of the House of Representatives, John Gaillard, President Pro Tempore of the Senate, approved March 1st, 1815, James Madison, President of the United States. It is now my honor to welcome E.J. Dion, distinguished university professor, who will introduce our commencement speaker. Thank you. <clears throat> We can't say it enough today. Congratulations, McCourt class of 2023. Give yourself a round of applause. I, I, I want to say what a joy it is to teach here because you are so smart, so committed, and so interesting. So to the mothers and fathers out here, your sons and daughters are awesome. To partners, spouses, relatives of all kinds and friends, the people you love are awesome. And it's that awesomeness that makes me and what you'll achieve in your lives <clears throat> that gives me uh, such pleasure in being able to introduce Frank McCourt. Frank McCourt loves Georgetown. He loves students seeking knowledge. He loves his country and he loves the open and often raucous pursuit of truth, smart public policy ideas, and people working together with a common good in mind. Now, on most days, you could certainly argue with the order in which I listed some of Frank's love, loves. Notice I did put Georgetown first there. You can't argue about that order today. Uh, to say that Frank has been transformative for his alma mater 
and for the study of public policy at Georgetown is an understatement akin to saying that Babe Ruth made an enormous difference in baseball or the Beatles made an enormous difference in popular music. Uh, the focus on what Frank did in creating the McCord School is often focused on his first gift, and it's true that without that generosity, there is no McCord School, there is no Institute of Politics, there is no massive data institute, and that's just for starters. But on a day when we honor our graduates, I think we should lay even greater stress on the importance of the second gift of $100 million, half of which will be devoted to financial aid and scholarships. Let me repeat that, half of which will be devoted to financial aid and scholarships. This is, this is a real breakthrough for our school, but it's also a gift in the interest of social justice. If access to higher education generally is more and more constrained by costs, access to a degree in public policy is an even more challenging reach for students with limited resources. Not to put too fine a point on it, but public policy students especially those who serve their nations by working in government, do not count on becoming rich. They want to do good. And not having huge debts hanging over them puts that aspiration within their reach. Uh, it also furthers our school's goal of affording opportunity across the lines of race and class and gender and national origin. It allows our school to practice what we preach and makes that preaching more persuasive, which is something our Jesuit colleagues would no doubt appreciate. Uh, our ambition from day one is to be more than your normal public policy school, Frank has said. He wants a McCord school that is highly inclusive and transformative by breaking down barriers to entry which is to say that he practices what he preaches too. There's something else about Frank that I'd like to make special notice of today at this moment in our history. Um, his passion for making social media work for knowledge and truth and democracy not against them. Uh, Washington is not a city known for understatement so I particularly appreciated this nice, measured little bit of truth from Frank on this subject. Quotes, our use of social media currently is not designed to optimize for truth or a shared set of facts. I can hear students in this audience hearing that and saying something like, you yeah, think? Um, Truth and a shared set of facts are what the McCourt School is committed to. Frank is committed to supporting that mission with generosity, with determination, and with creativity. We're lucky that Frank graduated from Georgetown, along with his brothers Terrence and David and his father, Frank H. McCourt Sr., who got his degree 84 years ago. We're lucky he left loving the place, we're luckier still that Frank has shown dedication to Georgetown by marrying this love to his desire for a better world in which citizens, especially the graduates of this school, take up their responsibilities to seek a newer world, to advance democracy, and to live in truth. And so it is my great honor and pleasure to present to you our 2023 commencement speaker, Frank McCourt. Hi, everyone. How are you? And thanks uh, to you, EJ, for that kind introduction and for all your contributions to the McCourt School and your long-standing dedication to Georgetown. I do have two points that I want to make to correct you. Georgetown is one of my loves, but my other loves are out here and uh, my family. So thank you for being here.
And the other sort of correction is I appreciate you mentioning the money towards uh, scholarships, but the dream for your school is that it will be totally tuition free. So that's our work for the next 10 years. So look, it's such a pleasure to share in this wonderful occasion with all of you, your families, as we celebrate this year's graduates in this treasured school's first decade of success. 10 years ago, I had the privilege of speaking at the founding ceremony and sharing our vision to create the world's most inclusive and therefore most impactful public policy training ground. Thanks to all of you, and particularly to you, President DeJoya, for your friendship and your steadfast commitment from day one. And to you, Dean Kenshin, for your truly extraordinary leadership. So it's happened. This class, you, are the realization of that vision. Graduates, I've had the great pleasure of meeting many of you. And in my regular conversations with Dean Kanchin, I hear about all of you and your remarkable achievements. Your achievements are worth celebrating. You especially are worth celebrating. And I've heard a few rounds of applause for you, but I'm gonna actually ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to join me now for a really robust round of applause for these students. So that's why we're here this evening, to commemorate this milestone, to congratulate you on your accomplishments, and to acknowledge the long hours and late nights that have brought you here. But there's something bigger than achievement, isn't there? Something greater, deeper, and more profound that's also worth celebrating this evening. As the late Buddhist master, Sing Yun, once said, our achievement is proportional to the size of our heart. Our outward successes, in other words, are impelled and enabled by something in our core. Is that something empathy, love, compassion, spirituality, or maybe all of these. For me, that guiding force in our inner core is captured beautifully in one word that the Jesuits here on the hilltop taught me years ago. And that word is magnanimity. It's a word we don't use often, but it captures something very important. It's made up of two Latin words, magna, which means greatness, and animus, which means spirit or soul. So literally, it means greatness of soul. As Sing Yun went on to say, if we can show magnanimity towards those in our families, we can be leaders in our homes. If we can show magnanimity towards those in our communities, we can be leaders 
of our communities. If we can show magnanimity toward those in our nation, we can be leaders of our nation. This concept is fundamental to the Buddhist ideal of living in harmony with the Tao, the natural order of all existence. But it is not unique to Buddhism. On the contrary, it rings through centuries, millennia of scholarly and spiritual guidance from leaders, theologians, and philosophers from every corner of the globe and throughout human history. In the Islamic tradition, magnanimity is known as kirama. In the Hindu faith, it's mahatmya. Aristotle called it the crowning virtue, the one from which all others arise. Cicero argued it was about serving the common good. Ignatius, our Ignatius, saw magnanimity as foundational to the values upon which the Jesuit order and this great university were built. Of course, the obvious question is, what does all this look like in practice? What does it really feel like in practice? Not in the pages of a philosophy textbook or an example from antiquity, but in the real, complicated, messy world we live in today. How do we, each of us, exercise our humanity in today's world. In 1955, Dag Hammarskjöld, the second ever General, Secretary General of the United Nations, who President Kennedy considered to be the greatest statesman of the 20th century, looked back on the time since the UN's founding a decade earlier. Here's what he said. He asked, what are 10 years on the long road of mankind? And he observed that man in the development of his spiritual and ethical maturity lags far behind his own technical achievements. Now think of the time when Hammerschald was speaking those words. The 10 years he was describing began with the use of two atomic bombs. He had seen the transition from a global conflict marked by systematic genocide to a cold war in which the threat of nuclear annihilation was a constant looming presence. It is no wonder then that he was struck by the way humankind's spiritual and ethical leadership lagged behind technology. And those words, spoken in 1955, came at a time when we still had only scratched the surface of our capacity for technical achievement. He spoke years before the Apollo program and a person's first steps on the moon, before the PC and the microprocessor, before the human genome was sequenced, before the internet, the smartphone, social media, and now, AI, the technical achievements, the technology he referred to is racing forward. But here's another question. Is our spiritual and ethical maturity doing the same? Let's consider our last 10 years the time since the founding of this school. Over the past decade, so much of our lives have moved online. The ways we communicate, learn, work, shop, manage our finances, entertain ourselves, and engage with one another have changed more quickly than we could have ever imagined. And yet, in a more technologically connected world, we are, in many ways, more disconnected from each other than at any time in recent history. The internet is warping our society, stealing our identities, and selling our information to the highest bidder. Social media is wrecking 
our public discourse, prioritizing clicks over truth and making outrage more profitable than facts. The tech architecture that underpins everything we do has put platforms over people and corrupted our foundational systems and institutions. As a result, the institutions that served in the past to unite us and strengthen our society, those that supported a functioning democracy and enabled a fair economy, have been weakened. And this has made it vastly more difficult to address the many challenges that will shape our future. Now, I know that all of you have learned to evaluate data when making policy, right? So let's talk metrics for a moment. For me, at the end of the day, there is only one metric that matters, and it's this. Are we taking care of our children? Are we serving the next generation? Are we handing off a future that offers greater opportunities and a better quality of life? This is the sacred metric. Droughts and extreme weather events are surging. Guns are now the leading cause of death among children in America. Whether it's poverty or education, the environment or mounting debts, kids today are facing a pretty daunting world. And on top of that, recent studies have shown that smartphones and social media are contributing to an incredible surge in mental health issues that affect nearly half of all young people, stealing their happiness, their joy, at a time when they are most vulnerable and, tragically, causing many to even take their own lives. All of these challenges are exaggerated by the tech that deliberately puts us at odds with one another. The tech that drives conflict. The tech that robs us of our privacy. The tech that replaces what makes us human with what makes us profitable. Extinguishing the trust and compassion that should be at the center of a functioning society. Our technology is no longer simply outpacing our humanity. It's working at cross purposes. The magnanimity that Aristotle talked about, that Ignatius talked about, the greatness of heart and soul that so many philosophers and faith traditions champion is being hollowed out. Our technical achievements, our tech is sucking the very soul out of our humanity. And we know it too. None of this is a secret. We see the changes in our kids. We see the changes in ourselves. But instead of rising to the occasion, we are, we've lowered our expectations. Instead of delivering a better life for our kids and their kids, our leaders are too often focused simply on slowing the damage, or worse yet, using the power of technology to win elections, regardless of the cost to society. What good is technology that sucks the soul out of humanity? What good are giant technical steps forward if we are pointed in the wrong direction? So that's the path we find ourselves on today, one where a distorted public discourse is optimized for conflict, not the constructive exchange of ideas, where democratic ideals, values, behaviors are suffocated by soulless authoritarian tech, where our data and our digital identities, our online selves, are wholly owned and exploited for profit by massive corporations that see us as products to be commodified rather than human beings to be served. I'm reminded right now of my mom, who was here with us when the school was founded. And the reason I'm reminded is because I just complained a lot. And me and my six siblings 
We were very good at that dinner table, her dinner table, describing a problem. And before any meal was finished, I could still hear my mom's voice. That's great. You've got the problem. Now what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? You see, this path is not binding. Nothing, nothing is yet set in concrete. This hollowing out of our humanity does not have to be the final word. We still have a choice. We still have a chance. We still have a cure for the illness that's plaguing us. And that cure is you. When Hammerschalt spoke about humankind's propensity for harm, he included an important caveat. In general terms, it may be true, he said, that man, in the development of his spiritual and ethical maturity, lags far behind his technical achievements. But it is not true of those few who in their personal lives and as leaders have shown how man can truly live in peace with man. Those few. Hammerschald recognized that we are not destined to destruction, that there are those among us, those few, whose greatness of spirit drives them and guides them to alter what seems to others as the intractable trajectory of the world. In the history of mankind, there's one thing that determines our direction, and that's human beings. It's us. It's you. That's why today, even in the midst of this darkness, I look out at this class and I see the face of hope. I see individuals who have earned a degree from one of the most rigorous public policy programs on the planet while juggling jobs, research, family life, volunteering, running student groups, founding organizations, and starting businesses. I see a class that is already helping to lead us in a better and brighter direction, shedding new light on the effects that excessive screen time had on kids during COVID, pioneering new ways to prevent firearm suicide, working with local leaders here in DC through the Policy Innovation Lab to make a difference in this community. I see a cohort that itself has become a community cheering each other on and challenging yourselves to take advantage of all the opportunities this program offers. Yes, I see the face of hope. You are the hope. You are the possibility. The time you have spent at this extraordinary institution, the skills you've developed, the networks you've built, and the talents you've honed have made you a perfect match for the challenges we face as a society. And I should probably also mention the obvious. The fact that you're sitting here today means that most of you made it through Professor Shoney's microclass. And that alone should give us all a lot of confidence in your ability to do really big things. So. Kidding aside, more than your intellect or your acquired skills, I have faith in the size of your heart, in your capacity to meet our moment, not only with your proficiency, but with your magnanimity. You have the chance to navigate a new path that is not determined by the power of technology, but rather is guided by the aspirations of your soul. 
as you leave this place today and in the weeks and the months to come, you will take on roles that put you at the center of the era-defining conflict that I have done my best today to describe. Some of you may even choose to help reimagine the way technology itself interacts with our institutions or how it affects our interactions with one another. Over the last few years, I've been engaged in my own effort to help rebuild our civic infrastructure through an initiative called Project Liberty, an attempt to fundamentally change how the internet works, making it a public square for the public benefit. In other words, a better web for a better world. If you're as excited by this project as I am, join, come join us, be a part of it. Others of you will enter different fields and take on different issues from education to healthcare to criminal justice and far beyond in private practice or public service. But no matter what you do next or where your interests and aspirations lie, you will have the opportunity and I might even say the responsibility to access your spiritual and ethical core and let your humanity shape our connected future. A future where our democracy is responsive, where opportunity is real, where problems like climate change and gun violence can be solved, and where the next generation can look forward to a life that is more open, more compassionate, and more joyful than the one we have today. And where kids can be safe and healthy and happy and excited where technology can support their journey instead of harming it, where we can once again make the promise and keep it that tomorrow will be better than today, where the welfare of the next generation, our sacred metric, is once again measured with a great sense of pride and shared accomplishment. I know it may sound difficult to take this stuff on, to challenge the powers that be, dream something different, and then go do it. But here is the truth, graduates. It is not impossible. In fact, it's not even complicated, is it? And it can be joyful. Take my word as a builder. Building is joyful. There is no joy in tearing things down. There's no joy in hatred or in anger or in resentment. But there is great joy. No matter how hard the work in building and creating and improving with purpose and compassion and with love. So let's choose this. Let's put this at the center. Let's move from mitigation to elevation, from mere damage control to endless opportunity. Let's raise our eyes to the horizon, to what's possible. And instead of letting technology drag us into a future that we don't want. Let's choose magnanimity as our guiding principle, our North Star, and use tech as just a tool to help us get there. Think of the world that Hammerschalt inherited and what people accomplished between 1945 and 1955. A whole new world order was created. Now, imagine what you together can accomplish over the next 10 years. I've had a long career, and I've experienced the view from the top and from the bottom. And sadly, it took me far too long to recognize that success doesn't come from the outside, but from in here. And so if I can leave you with just one piece 
of simple advice. It's this. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't let your soul take a backseat to your achievement. Instead, look deeply inside of yourself. Think about who you are, who you want to be, and infuse your highest self, that self, into everything you do. If you do that, if you engage your magnanimity, the greatness of your souls, then I have no doubt that you can, no, rather that you will reshape the trajectory of our world. I have no doubt that you will build a fairer economy, a more just democracy, and a resilient civic infrastructure that is optimized for good. And I have no doubt that you will build for us a future that will far surpass anything that humankind has seen before. Congratulations, class of 2023. Well said. Thank you, Frank, for your many contributions to Georgetown and for your inspiring remarks this evening. Before we begin the presentation of the candidates for their degrees, I would like to recognize the contributions made by our faculty and our staff my colleagues here at the McCourt School, as students, each one of you has studied with, been challenged by, um, and supported by, sought counsel from many of our full and part-time faculty members and staff. I therefore ask you as graduates to join me in expressing appreciation for your teachers and administrators. It is a great privilege to introduce my distinguished colleagues the faculty of the McCourt School of Public Policy who are seated behind me, and the McCourt School staff who are in the audience assisting with today's ceremony. We are now prepared to present candidates for their degrees. I, I ask Alexander Sens, Dean of the Graduate School, to come forward and present the candidates for their degrees in course. Please hold your applause until all graduates have been recognized. Dean Sens. The graduates will now come forward to receive their diplomas. Professor Barbara Shoney, faculty director of the Master of Public Policy program, will read the names of MPP graduates. Professor Lynn Ross will call the Master of Policy Management graduates as director of that program. Frank Wiebe, faculty director of the Master of International De Development Policy degree program, will announce the names of students graduating with an MIDP degree. Professor Jerry Gingrich, faculty director of the Executive Master of Policy Leadership Program, <laughs> will announce the names of the EMPL students. And Professor Dave Manoli, faculty director of the Data Science for Public Policy Program, will read the names of DSPP graduates. The faculty directors will also hood the graduates.
should go. Stay, wait. As faculty director of the Master of Public Policy degree program, I am proud to call forth the following graduates. Stefan Umberto Abarbiarete. Joseph Aaron Abeta. Jasmine Adams. Thomas John Adams. Beryl Nana Ama Akufo Kwapong. Jacob Henry Al Muaber. Benito Aranda Comer. Catherine Arnold. Isha Aurora. Karina Barreo. Alexandra Caroline Beeson. Juliet Bellin Warren. Lydia Blanford. Pascal Boktor. Christopher David Bauscher. Jason Troy Bradley. Keegan Brown. Kira Anna Mekush Brown. Scott Austin Brown. Sylvia Claire Brown. Alicia Ann Buenaventura. Benjamin Burnley. Sarah Elizabeth Burt. Julia Repelier Bushman. Quentin Bird. Hui Xin Tsai. Yu Wat Tsai. Isabella Camacho Craft. Sheng Tsao. Yushin Chong. Catherine Elizabeth Chavez. Priyasha Chala. Nua Chun. Wenjing Chan, Xian Chan, Iran Chang, Shukka Yen Lian, Julia Chiliota Besada. Sean Connor. Jordan Alexa Cruz. Madeline Elaine Kurtwright. Shira Rebecca Davidson. Lauren DeLuca. Maggie DeSisto, Alfredo Dominguez, Benjamin L. Eichberg, Yu Ching Fun, Tatiana Fedrick, Michael Gallagher Feeney, Jonathan Robert Finch.
Cynthia Marie Fioriti, Aaron Martley Fitzpatrick, Lillian Alina Fix, Diana Fontaine, Karina Natalia Purashtieri Santiago, Mary Frances Foster, Lucas Fox, Malcolm Halpern Fox, Catherine Walker Frazier, Brittany Laurel Freed, Bowen Fu, Grant Christian Fuller, Itarugan Galbatar, Ian David Gansler, Tian Zhao Gao, Ya Gao, Maron Bernard Jean Marie Guillot, Michaela Junti, Ernesto Godinez. Lior Goldwasser, Gabriel Nicholas Gonzalez III, Catherine Maeve Grady, Alexis Grippo, Tanya Grover, Seth Davies Gulas. Karan Gupta, Lydia Guzman Fernandez, Courtney Lauren Hom, Allison Hamburger, Caitlin Rose Hamilton, Joseph Joshua Lott Hardesty. Tian Yi He, Kayla Michelle Henneberry, Rebecca Lynn Henches, Terin Heron, Hannah Catherine Cortasel Hill. Chance Bennett Hope, Liam Flynn Ingman, Kaushik Jagadish, Eric Jaffe, Jilay Jin, Elizabeth Stephanet Johnson. Thomas Robert Johnson, Patrick Jones, Rachel Isabel Jones, Arundhati Joshi, Albert Manurong. Emma Elise Kaboli, Kriti Kapoor, Natalie Elise Kirsch, Hannah Ilana Klukov, Jake Komansky, Eliza Francis Kritz. Radaya Kulkarni, Stephanie Tani Kuo, Kyle Lockman, yeah. 
Brianna Janae LaFontant. Eli Baxter Landman. Shelby Caitlin Lauter. Lucas LeBorn. Heywen Lay. Brooke McCarsky LePage. Grace Lee. Joe Ray Lee. Amy Lieber. Max Joseph Linder. Fan Lia. Zhao Lia. Juliet Logan. Aaron Margaret Luck. Shu Chi Ma. Bridget Lee Mahoney. Daniel Thomas Mahoney. Elvira Mock Fred. Ian Sekamana Manzi. Seamus McCreesh. Kelly McManamon. John Allen McQuinn. Sarah Melbostead. Richard Gustavo Mendiola, Jr. Jacob Harrison Mervis. Cole Mesa. Makana Dimitriestis Mayer. Elena Catherine Myers. Nian Lin Tun Min. Agnes Yila Mock. Alec Hunter Money. Macy Ryan Moore. Christopher F. Mungello. Bowler Erdine Munbar. Asha Murali Tharan. Gustavo Murillo Velasquez. Deepika Nagesh. Brianna Lani Nicker. Abrar Isam Omesh. Ogenethagogor Omorojor. Alejandro Ohms. Matthew Parker. Vanessa Rakesh Patel. Vishwas Paul. Jenna Pelli Bioko. Victoria Pong. Geronimo V. Poten. Emma Elizabeth Radich. Ranjani Rajendran. Arash Razagian. Carl Morizet Reynado. William Grayson Rixey. Andrew Prentice Robinson. Noah Javon Rufaga. Ashley Isabel Rosado. Raquel J. Rosenblum. Zachary Heath Royster. 
Charlotte Runzel. Kevin Rutherford. Tyler Samara Wickramama. Genesis Santiago. Alicia Saxena. Andrew James Schlegel. Ilya Gabriel Schneider. Rachel Schneider. Louisa Marie Scholler. Alexandra Lee Scotfienza. Kathleen Bree Seiler. Diana Danielle Setness. Anna Setzer. Imani Shirill. Mayong Suk Shin. Harrison John Silver. Lauren Ashley Simpson. Ashna Vikram Singh. Sunalika Singh. Sarah Solomon. Olivia Spino. Elena April Spielman. Sahana Srinivasan. Lee Clinton St. John. Nadia Lynn Stofacek. Jawei Soon. Ron Ron Soon. Takori and Tilly. Daniel Tamaris. Connor Udell. Ricky S. Ulmer. Vincenzo Vaccaro. Anna Christina Vivis Thomas. Jingxuan Wong. Ewen Wong. Yu Jing Wong. Catherine Ward. Peyton Elizabeth Lois Weber. Christopher David Wolf. Ifan Wu. Emma Ruth Wyma. Yu Chen Marie Xu. Michelle Zayed Atala. Nan Zhao. Tian Zhao. Xiaolin Rika Zhang. Xin Yu Zhang. Ming Zhou. Tianeng Zhu. Yang Wang. Ready? As faculty director of the Master of Policy Management degree program, I am proud to call forth the following graduates. 
Francois Acosta. Soraya Afrina. Haley Daniela Aguayo. Jonathan Agudelo. Quincy Luis Alegria Gambrel. Lauren Marie Lickus Augustine. Cisnell Baez. Remington Robert Barnes. Stephanie Bello Rosario. Carlos Omar Beltran. Lawrence Wayne Cavins. Hei Jin Cho. Hei Jin Chua. Brina Antoniata Cortez. <laughs> Kirsten Javaya de la Cruz. <laughs> Noah Sutton Gregory. That's her. Cesar Andres Diago Guaqueta. Janeiro T. Dingle. Robin Angebus. Kayla Appel. Elisa Erarusas Wilson. Janet Esparza Lazo. Elise Francisco. Matthew Gallagher. Oh, here in the box. Oscar Gasca. William Jerome George. Justin Taylor Gleason. Julie Johanna Gutierrez Marino. <laughs> Stephanie Gutierrez Ortiz. <laughs> Jay Guzman. <laughs> Austin Lee Henderson. Diana Tweed Hendricks. Johnny B. Hutchins, Jr. Caroline Sarah Hopper Janey. Cecil Kenneth Brooks, Jr. Brianna Deshawn Jefferson. Cassandra Ann Jones. Talal Habib Kazbor. Fiona Corman. Moeko Kando.
Suman Lee. Matan Y. Lev Ari. Rosalind P. Louie. Jessica Manuela Loya. Kevin Charles Marks. Laquana Lee McCall. Joanna Lee McDowell. Ryut Medallion. Marulika Mupidi. Nazneen Mamuda. Ni T. Nguyen. Rebecca Normile. Katie O'Reardon. Ethan O'Connor. Minjiung Park. Talay Janet Pasikale. Catherine Elizabeth Penland. Edward Albert Putzier. Taylor Rain Ramreth. Sean Riley Sandbloom. Aaron Scanlon. Greta N. Schaff. Ray B. Shackelford. Stephen Diggs Shaw. James Weston Stubert. Miho Takahashi. Diego Vasquez Teixeira. Keenan Tom. J. Michael Trexler. Christopher Truong. Tyler Turgo. Ryan Tyre. Nandula Ubezone. Danielle Vaughn. Elsie Katrina Vargas. Ashley Wick. Brandon O'Brien Williams. Michael Evans Williams. Mohammed Zaman. Violeta Maria Zamora. As faculty director of the Master of International Development Policy Program, I am proud to call forth the following graduates. Abrar Rafi Ahmad. Ross Babino. Sujaja Baig. Tyler Box. Enrico Lorenzo Sunga Campos. Yulin Gao. 
Samuel Sullivan Grants. Brian Isaac Greenberg. David Camilo Guzman Fonseca. Rishika Jera. Jacqueline Lamas. Asta Mainali. Thor Fitzgerald Manson. Manami Nakayama. Maria Antonella Pereira. Kwang Pham Vu. Juan Nicolas Quintero Fandino. Grace Caitlin Robinson. Miti Bumik Shah. Hmm? Pyle Suneja. Sagarika Tanvi. Haley Wellenstein. And Shishi Young. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. As faculty director of the Executive Master of Policy Leadership degree program, I am proud to call forth the following graduates. Antonio Jose Arc. Maria Alejandra de Filippis. Elena Aceves Falks. Anna Kishanisvili. Kevin Landau. Joe Mohammed. Oscar Armando Perez Gonzalez. John Anthony Perez. James Albert Ramsey. Amy Catherine Roderick. Christina Dion Sanders. Tony Valencia. Shauna Claire Young. Thank you. As director of the Master of Science in Data Science for Public Policy program, I am extremely proud to call forth the following graduates. Alia Abdel Qadr. Caroline Elizabeth Adams. Xavier Matthias Adamatis. Alvaro Altamirano Montoya. <laughs> Mohammed Asif Bati. <laughs> Tian Wuhi Sao. Kalika Chokola. 
Philip Cork. Aaron Gennon. Anandi Gupta. Sai Shrujana Illa. Nikila Iyer. Lucien Lavanya Julien. Samuel David LeBlanc. Pajin Louis. Yifan Louis Leo. David Lopez Jr. Cameron MacDonald. Audrey McIntyre. Ellis Safa O'Brien. Abigail Ruth Patterson. Woo! Ryan Anthony Ripper. Woo! Joshua Rosen. Woo! Raul Srivastava. Woo! Sonali Subu Ratinam. Shaila Sundaram. Injun Tao. Abigail Wolf. Thayer Wu. Wenhui Yang. Lawand Yasin. Colette Bukvar Yeager. Gautam Yegapun. Julie Zaklis Antau. Naitsui Jean. Morgan Eileen Zimmerman. And President DeJoya, it is my great honor to present the aforementioned candidates for their degrees. Will the candidates please rise? These candidates have been duly examined by the faculty and approved by the Board of Directors. I therefore ask that you bestow upon them the degrees in course. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Congress of the United States and by the Board of Directors of Georgetown University, I officially confer upon these candidates the degrees of Master of Public Policy, Master of Policy Management, Master of International Development Policy, Executive Master of Policy Leadership, and Master of Science in Data Science for Public Policy. Congratulations. Wow. 
Well done. You may now be seated. Before I bid the graduates what I hope is only a temporary goodbye from the hilltop, I would like to recognize here the parents, the relatives, and friends of the graduates who have provided our students with such valuable support. We honor and thank you for your contributions to our students. And now it is my privilege to present the president of Georgetown University, Dr. John Day DeJoya, to offer closing reflections. Well, good evening, everyone. What a special day, this day of celebration, each of you has earned your place among the graduates of Georgetown University. This is a day of gratitude. Again, thank you to the families and loved ones, mentors, friends, colleagues, and peers who have supported our graduates. We're honored to share this moment with all of you. I wish to offer my sincere appreciation to Dean Kan Chun and to our faculty and staff for all of their efforts to support and guide our graduates to this milestone. These colleagues, many seated behind me, have demonstrated extraordinary care and commitment to teaching and mentorship, to research and scholarship, and to supporting a vibrant and diverse community. To our faculty and staff, I want to thank you for your many contributions every day that have made this day possible. Our ceremony is that much more special with the reflections of our speaker. Frank, I want to thank you on behalf of all of us for joining us for this commencement, for helping us mark. <laughs> for helping us to mark the 10th anniversary of our McCourt School and for sharing your inspiration, your perspective, and your insights with our graduates and all of us assembled this evening. Thank you. We're also grateful to have your family with us to mark this special occasion. And as we further grow the reach and impact of the McCourt School of Public Policy, it's an honor to have your continuing engagement and support. To the class of 2023, congratulations. This, this day of celebration, this day of gratitude, this is your day. So much has been asked of you over these past few years. You have forged community during the most difficult of circumstances. You've faced challenges none of us could have imagined only a few years ago. You've gained knowledge and experience, a deeper understanding of yourself, of our world. Your hard work, your dedication, your commitment to service and to the common good, everything that you have done at Georgetown has brought you to this moment. The two milestones that we mark this year, events that represent the confluence of challenges that we face in public policy and in governance, 75 years ago, in 1948, the United Nations adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, affirming the inherent dignity of all people. This was an unprecedented global statement, an illumination of the shared values and commitments that unite us as a world, and the responsibilities that we share for one another. Over these decades, our world has grown ever more interconnected. 
and this is perhaps you know, better symbolized than the invention of the internet, internet in 1983, 40 years ago when the first universal computer protocols were established. As we heard in Frank's beautiful set of reflections, our world, our lives, we're all that much more deeply connected through our economies and transportation, through communication and technologies, ideas can have an immediate and worldwide reach. And so too, as we heard, so too do the challenges that we face. This presents new, urgent, emerging challenges for all of us, for public policy and governance, for how we organize our communities, our civic architecture, our health and safety, our daily lives? How can we advance the flourishing of our people and our planet in this age of technology and worldwide connection? Over your time here, we've begun to address these challenges together. You've been embraced by a faculty or at the leading edge of thinking on public policy. Your experiences inside and outside the classroom, with faculty, with one another, with experiential learning projects, in jobs and in internships, all these have exposed you to the very best that we know and enable us to anticipate in ever deeper ways the global challenges of our future. You go forth from this day prepared to make a difference in our world, to transform our world so that all of our people can flourish. When you arrived here, you embarked on a journey, one that now continues beyond this place and beyond this moment. As you enter the next stages of your journeys, you do so not only with the knowledge that you have learned, but also the values that you have shaped here, the character that you have forged. All of you are prepared to bring your talents, your knowledge, your compassion, your imagination, in service to our world. And as you depart on this day of celebration and accomplishment, we're so deeply grateful for all of the contributions that you have made to this community, and we look forward to the ways that your leadership and service will contribute to the common good of our broader communities. It is a privilege for all of us to be here with you, to recognize this important milestone in your lives, and the beginning of the next step on your journeys. Now with this commencement, you embark on another special time in your lives. This is your time, and we are honored to share this moment with you. To the class of 2023, congratulations. Thank you all for joining us today, and congratulations once more to our graduates. We wish you well in all of your endeavors and welcome you as members of the Georgetown and McCourt alumni family. Please stand for the alma mater, which will be led by members of the Georgetown University Concert Choir and Chamber Singers. The words to the alma mater are located on the back of the commencement program book. Please remain standing while Father Bosco offers the benediction. Yeah.
Let us bow our heads in this final prayer. Good and gracious God, you whom we call by many names, we humbly give you thanks and praise for our gathering this evening as we celebrate the achievements of these graduates of the McCourt School of Public Policy. We ask your blessing upon all of us, students, faculty, staff, families, a blessing of life, a blessing of hope, a blessing of peace. Loving God, we especially ask a blessing on our graduates as we recognize the honors and successes of these past years. Endowed and trained with the knowledge and skills of their profession, may their accomplishments continue in service of the common good of humanity. Grant them success in every good endeavor and inspire them to live lives dedicated to the service of peace and holy justice. Bless them with wisdom of your Holy Spirit. Bless them with willing and compassionate hearts. We thank you and we bless you, God of our hearts. Abide in us and may we always love the life you have given us and live to become women and men for others. In your holy name we pray, amen. Will the guests please remain standing at their places until the faculty and graduates have recessed. You are all invited to join us for a reception at Dahlgren Quadrangle. The ushers will assist you in directing you to the reception. The 2023 McCourt School of Public Policy commencement exercisers are now officially closed.